Hi, this is a video about maths firing of large scale live steam locos. It's intended for the gauge 3 community but also applies to any large scale maths fired locomotives. To many people you'll only be familiar with maths firing with this type of stationary engine from Mamod. This is a mass burner which contains a sim simple sump and a single burner. The important thing to note from this image is that the sump is lower than the top of the burner, which means the amount of mass in the sump is never higher than the burner, which does not result in flooding. This is a major difference between maths firing on larger scale locomotives. On a larger locomotive the principle is exactly the same but the pipe leading from the sump to the burner in this case is the rubber silicon tube and also as you will see shortly the sump on the tender or in the body of a tank locomotive is a different aspect on this gauge 3 model you can see the sump underneath the tender and the silicon feed pipe to the locomotive burner. Although the sump is quite large, if you filled this in a manner traditionally as with a mammoth, you would have to be stopping every few minutes to pour some methylated spirits into the sump. Another factor to consider when using methylated spirits is to be very careful not to drip it. Even this small amount inside the tender has removed some paint and it's very easy to take the paint off your precious models and very easy to remove lining and In order to keep the sump supplied with methylated spirit we have a meth tank. On the underside of the meth tank there are two apertures. The pipe which has got an angled end on it, sits in the sump and works on the chicken feed principle. The small spigot with a hole in is actually where the methylated spirit drips from into the sump. The meth tank should be kept as a sealed unit. When the meth within the sump falls below the angle of the feed pipe, breather pipe, then it lets an air bubble up into the tank which then releases the same amount of methylated spirit into the sump and therefore keeps the sump at the desired level. The manufacture of this angled pipe into the sump has to be carefully designed so that the sump sits at the correct level. On top of the meth tank the large hex nut is the filler cap and alongside it is the needle valve which allows you to shut off delivery from the meth tank into the sump. When the filler cap is removed it's vitally important that the needle valve is closed because allowing air into the tank with the needle valve open will let meth pour out of the bottom. The height and volume of the meth tank exceeds the height of the wicks within the locomotive firebox and also contains more meths than the sump can accommodate. So if you were to open the needle valve and also open the filler valve, meths would flood into the sump and overflow from the top of the sump and also overflow from the top of the wicks resulting in a pool of meths on the track which if the wicks are already lit will result in a fire. This is the most vital part to know about meth firing. Never ever refill or remove the filler cap unless the needle valve is screwed shut. If you are operating a meth fired loco 
it's always wise to have a dampened towel or large cloth ready should any fire ever occur the only way to extinguish it is to cover the whole locomotive and area to cut off the oxygen and stop the fire. After running a loco there will always be some methylated spirit left in the sump. So at the end of each run I remove the meth tank carefully making sure not to spill any drops from the meth tank and put the meth tank safely to one side. Then I use a syringe and draw out any remaining mess from the sump before carefully tipping the tender up and any residue from the silicon pipe into a suitable container. If I've finished the run and still got methylated spirits left in the tank to get rid of the remaining mess I stand it over a suitable tin then I open the needle valve and also open the filler valve to allow the remaining methylated spirit to come into the container. If it's a clean container you can then save your remaining meths and reuse it for another time. The meth tanks now sat in the tender body in position ready for filling. So now the delivery pipe is sat immediately above the sump and the chicken feed pipe is sat into the sump. So I'm ready for putting some meths in the tank now. The needle valve is closed. The filler cap is off. I have some meths in a syringe here ready to go in. It's a good idea to practice and learn how much volume of methylated spirit your tank takes so that you don't risk overfilling it and spilling over the top and doing any paint damage. It's also wise to use a syringe with a piece of tubing rather than pouring from a bottle in a funnel just in case somebody bumps into you and risk splashing it everywhere and causing a fire. So now we've got meths in the meth tank. As you can see there's nothing coming out of the silicon delivery tube at the moment. That's because the needle valve is shut. So as the needle valve is opened a few turns that allows the methylated spirit now to pour into the sump. Now it's dripping into the sump drip by drip because the breather pipe is only allowing that little drip of air into the tank as the mess comes out. Now it's filling the sump slightly and it's starting to be delivered down the feed pipe. Now I shall just close that feed pipe with my fingers. That's to emulate the loco having spirit delivered to the burners. If the loco wasn't working hard or using much methylated spirit there would be no meths being delivered into the sump now at this point. The sump has methylated spirit above the level of the angled pipe so no more is being delivered. It's only as the locomotive uses the spirit that more is delivered. Unlike gas fired locos where you can turn the amount of fuel up and down with methylated spirit you're at the mercy of your setting of your wicks and also how much the locomotive is working. If it's only working very lightly then it's not drawing as much methylated spirit and it'll last longer. Whereas if it's working hard 
it'll be drawing more fire and sucking more mass down the pipe. Shut that needle valve off to stop any more meths being delivered into the sump. Various types of meths are available. The cheap stuff as they call it, the purple stuff, can be found in most hardware shops. But doesn't burn as hot. There's some better quality pure alcohol. However these pure alcohols are clear. And it can be very easy to get them confused for water. Imagine trying to douse a fire out with some of this stuff. So if you're using clear methylated spirits always mix a little bit of the cheap stuff in to colour it or add a little bit of food dye so there can be no confusion with water. Now this all sounds very scary but meth firing is very satisfying and the aroma is very pleasant and I find there's nothing better when you get your locomotive out and open the lid of your box and get that aroma of methylated spirits. So we're looking now at the locomotive. This is the pipe onto which the silicon feed hose connects and on this locomotive there's four burner wicks. These are oval but they can be round they could also be rectangular, but they all follow the same basic principle. And usually this method of fitting with a simple U-bracket is what holds the burners in place. So these can easily be removed. You can take your wicks out and swap them. Unlike a gas fired loco which creates its own draft, a meth fired loco will need the use of a steam raising blower of the type seen here in this chimney, which can be run off small household alarm batteries. This is used until the boiler pressure gets up to enough pressure to allow the blower to work on its own steam pressure and keep on raising steam which is usually around 20 ps. In order to light your wicks most locomotives will need light in between the frames. Generally the best method is to have a piece of wire with some wick material on the end. Dip this into some meth and light it and then while the blower is working offer it up between the frames to light the wicks. Some locomotives, as is the case with this model, are fitted with a fire door, which makes lighting easier. But this is a luxury and not the norm.